In today's video, we're going to learn about how Markov chains are used to generate text, and then we're going to talk about how to do this in R using just three lines of code. In order to follow along with this video, you don't need to know any math, and you don't need to be an expert programmer. As always, all of the code used in this tutorial will be available on my GitHub, which I'll link below the video. If you're new to my channel, welcome and thanks so much for checking it out. Please be sure to subscribe so that I can keep making videos like this. Let's get started. I want to show you an example of what the finished product is going to look like before we talk about how it works or how to create your own version. What you're looking at right now is a web app I created using Shiny, and this app allows you to generate text based on a CSV file that you provide to it. For this example, we're going to be generating Reddit posts from the subreddit Shower Thoughts. If you aren't familiar with this subreddit, the idea is basically that people post weird thoughts that they might have while taking a shower or doing some other mundane task. For example, if we go to the top post of all time, it says, whoever created the tradition of not seeing the bride in the wedding dress beforehand saved countless husbands everywhere from hours of dress shopping and will forever be a hero to all men. So it's just funny, short, thought-provoking sentences. If we wanna generate some of our own shower thoughts, we can do so by giving this app a CSV containing shower thoughts that other people have really posted on this subreddit. I'm gonna be using this data set that I downloaded from Kaggle, which I'll link in the description of this video. And in order to make sure it's in the format that the app is expecting, I've gone ahead and pasted the shower thoughts into a CSV file that contains only one column and where each row is a separate entry. Now I'm going to upload this file to the app, which may take a minute since this file is about 100 megs. Once it's uploaded, I can click this generate text button and in a matter of just a couple minutes, it's going to generate completely new shower thoughts based on the ones that it was provided in the CSV. Not all of them are going to make perfect sense grammatically and we'll talk about why later in this video, but there are a few that it produces that make sense grammatically and are, I guess, thought provoking. We've got this one right here or this sentence or this one, which isn't really a shower thought per se, but it is a question that makes grammatical sense. So how does this work? Well, the app relies on a mathematical model known as a Markov chain. It's used in text generation to predict the word that should come next based on the current word and the word before it. The text that we feed as input to the model is broken up into sequences of words, and then probability distributions are used to determine which word should come next based on these distributions. Now that all sounds great in theory, but that's a bit high level. To understand more deeply, let's actually do this ourselves. Before we do this, I should note that there's more than one way a model like this can work, so I'm going to base this explanation off of how it's implemented in the app that we saw earlier. In the example from before, we had uploaded over a million shower thoughts. Let's simplify things down a bit and see how this algorithm works if we instead use just a few sentences. More specifically, I'm going to use these three sentences as input. The first one is, Melissa likes R programming the best. The second one is, comparatively, Melissa likes programming in Python a bit less. And the third and final sentence is, some people prefer programming in Python over R programming. In order to represent the start of a sentence, I'm going to use a starting flag, and to represent the end of the sentence, I'm going to use a stop sign. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these sentences into sequences of two words each, and then I'm going to list the word that comes right after it. So the first sequence is starting flag Melissa, which is followed by the word likes. And the second sequence is Melissa likes, which is followed by the word R. Next, we have likes R, which is followed by programming, and so on. If we repeat this process, we get something that looks like this. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for any repeated sequences. Since this example is so small, there's only three two-word sequences that appear more than once. There's Melissa likes, R programming, and in Python. For the first repeated sequence, there are two different possibilities for the word that comes next, either R or programming. Both of these occur with equal probabilities. With the other sequence that's repeated, there's also two different possibilities for the word that comes next. The next word is either the, 
which occurs with 50% probability, or the sentence ends, which also occurs with 50% probability. Similarly, for the two-word sequence in Python, there are two equally likely possibilities for the next word. For any of the other two-word sequences, there's only one possible word that can come next, which therefore occurs with 100% probability. For every single two-word sequence in our input text, we now have a probability distribution for the word that comes next. And this is actually all we need in order to start generating new sentences. To generate the new sentences, we need the following two things to be true. Number one, the two-word sequences in our new sentences should be based off of existing two-word sequences. In other words, the new sentences shouldn't have something like programming likes because the model has never seen that sequence before. And number two, the sentence should actually be new. In other words, we don't wanna reproduce the exact same sentences that we saw before. Let's see if we can generate a brand new, never seen before sentence using those two rules. First, we'll need to pick a two word sequence that involves the start of a sentence, which was this flag character. Let's pick the first option, which is flag Melissa. From there, we look at the probability distribution to see which words can occur next. We can see that with 100% probability, the next word has to be likes. This means that our current two word sequence is now Melissa likes. And from here, we have two choices. We can either have the next word as R or we can have the next word as programming. Both of these words have the same probability of occurring next, so let's go ahead and flip a coin. If we get heads, we'll choose the first one, and if we get tails, we'll choose the second one. Let's say that we got heads, so the next word needs to be R. Our new two-word sequence is now likes R, so our next word has to be programming. Now we've got Melissa likes R programming. If we update our two-word sequence again, we have R programming, and we see that we once again need to flip a coin to determine the next word. Let's say we flipped a heads again, then we'd go with the first word, which was the. That makes our current sentence, Melissa likes R programming the. Updating our two word sequence again, there's only one possibility. We're almost done the sentence now. Our final two word sequence is the best, and our only choice is to end the sentence here. Overall, that gives us the sentence, Melissa likes R programming the best. Unfortunately though, this breaks rule number two, all of the sentences need to be totally brand new. If we look at the sentences we originally started with, we already had this exact same sentence. In practice, this means that we would throw this sentence out and start over. Now let's pretend we had flipped a tails instead of a heads on the first coin toss. If we had then followed the same process as we did before, we would have ended up with the sentence, Melissa likes programming in Python a bit less. That sentence that we just generated is brand new and it meets both of the rules from before, so we can keep it. This would be our first sentence generated by the model. If we were to repeat that process using every single possible combination we can, we would have come up with several other sentences that would have met both of those rules that were outlined before. There's a couple things I'd like to highlight here before we move on to the tutorial in R. There's pros and cons to using Markov chains for text generation. On the downside, the results are very sensitive to the specific sequences that are found in the input text. This can mean that the generated sentences come out making absolutely no sense because it's more about making sure that the words that are directly next to each other make sense, rather than making sure that the sentence as a whole is one that makes sense. The good thing though, is that the math is really simple and intuitive and computationally easy. This means that it's really quick to generate results, so you're not spending a ton of time waiting on a model to train. And when the math is simple, the code is too. Speaking of very little code and very little computational time, let's see how we can do this in R. We're going to start by opening up R Studio and then creating a new R script. And for this tutorial, we're going to be using the Markovify package, which is actually a Python package rather than an R package. And if we go to the documentation on GitHub for the Markovify Python package, we can learn a little bit more about it. And something that I think is really interesting here is that the GitHub repo shows some examples of how this package has actually been used in the real world. So you can get some ideas or inspiration for what you might be able to use this for yourself. And the other thing that's really interesting 
is that this package was initially developed by BuzzFeed. Now, because this is a Python package, there's going to be a couple of setup steps that we need to do before we get to those three lines of code to actually generate the new text. First, we need to make sure that the Markovify Python package is installed on our computer. Now, there's many different ways to do this, and it really depends on how you have Python set up on your machine. But one example would be to use the reticulate package, and you can use the pi install function to install the Markovify Python package. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna run that line of code. And once you have installed it, you can check that the package is available to RStudio by using the pi module available function from the reticulate package and pass the name of the Python package that you're looking for. So here I'm checking if the Markovify package is available to reticulate at the moment and that returned true, which means that I'm ready to use the Markovify Python package. From here, there's two different options. You can either use this Python package directly by interfacing through reticulate, which is the slightly more complex way, but perhaps slightly more flexible. Or the other option that you have is to install an R package called Markovify R, which basically has a bunch of wrapper functions that will use the Python Markovify library without you having to do any of the configuration yourself. That's the option that I'm gonna go with. And you can find the Markovify R, R package on GitHub. And to install from GitHub, we can use the remotes package, which has a function called install underscore GitHub. And the name of the user who maintains the Markovify R package is what we're gonna write first. And then we're gonna put a slash and then the name of the package that we're trying to install, which is Markovify R. I've already installed it, so I won't actually run this, but if you run this, it should take a couple of moments to get this R package installed. And now that we've done that setup, we're ready to move on to the three lines of code that it takes to generate text using Markov chains in R. The first line of code barely even counts as a line of code because all we're gonna do is load that Markovify R package that we just installed. And then from here, it's gonna be fairly straightforward we're going to use the function called generate underscore Markovify underscore model. And this is a function that comes from the Markovify R package. Now, whenever you're working with a new function that you haven't used before, it's a good idea to take a look at the documentation. To do that, you can type question mark and then the name of the function. And if you run that, it will pop up the documentation in the help panel in RStudio. And here you're gonna find all of the different arguments and example usages of the function. Here we can see that the first argument that this function takes is the input text, and that text needs to be contained as a vector. So let's start with that. In this case, for the input text, I'm gonna use those three sentences that we looked at in the example a little bit earlier, but you can certainly work with much bigger vectors. And more commonly, you would probably read in a CSV file that has the input text as one of the variables. And then you would pass that to this generate Markovify model function rather than typing out the text manually, which is what I'm doing for this very simple example. The first sentence was, Melissa likes R programming the best. The second sentence was, comparatively, Melissa likes programming in Python a bit less. And the third and final sentence was, some people prefer programming in Python over R programming. And that's the first argument to this function. The second argument here is called Markov state size. And if we scroll down to the explanation of this argument, it doesn't really provide that much information, unfortunately. It just says it's the Markov state to use and the default value is two. Now what this argument is really getting at here is the length of the sequences that, that are going to be used. So earlier when we were creating those two word sequences, the reason why I chose two was because that's what the default value is for this function. If you were to change this argument to instead say three, then 
the function would be breaking up all of your sentences into three word sequences instead of two word sequences. And if you play around with this, it'll change your results quite a bit. So I encourage you to try that. For this example though, I'm just gonna use the default value, which is two. And there's a few other arguments as well that you can play around with. For example, you can control how much overlap there is between your existing sentences that you fed as input text and the new sentences that are generated by the model. I'm going to remove this question mark that I had put at the start. And I'm also going to assign the output from this function to a variable called model. And that concludes our second line of code. If we go ahead and run that, it runs basically instantaneously. And the third and final line of code is going to be the line of code that actually generates the text using this model as input. To do that, we wanna use the Markovify underscore text function. Again, this is from the Markovify R package. And we need to pass the model object that we created in the second line of code as input to this function. So we'll set Markov model equal to model since that's what we named it up here. And I'll just assign this as well to an object. And now I can run this last line of code. And for some reason, when I run that, I'm only getting three outputted sentences when I know that I should have a lot more. So I'm just gonna take a look and see if there's any typos in the input text that I provided. And it looks like I made a typo right here. So if I change this to say Melissa likes instead of the typo that just said Melissa like, let's see if we rerun that, if that fixes our issue. And there we go, that fixed it. We've got quite a few more sentences that were generated now. This of course was just using a very simple example. We only provided three sentences as input to this function, but I hope that from this example, you can see how easy it is to do text generation in R. It only takes a few lines of code and it runs very quickly. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so that I can continue to keep making videos like this.